Well, hello, hello. This is Rose RCG Creations. How are you doing? I'm bringing to you today and how to make an empanada dough. We're going. I got a recipe off the website. Uh, let's see who, who who put it together. This has been done by the novicechefblog.com empanada dough. So there's the recipe. For anybody who wants to screenshot it all. Okay, and then there's the back of it. I made one yesterday, but I just got home late and it's still too cold to cook, so and I forgot to take a video of the first half of it, me making it. I was gonna do a video today of me putting it together, but since I have to do two things at one time start over, I'm just gonna make over from scratch because I was gonna make another batch tomorrow anyway for Thanksgiving. So you're gonna start off with four cups of flour. We're going to do one stick to plus six tablespoons of cold unsweetened butter. And I already sliced these up in little cubes. I got my butter from Azure and it is the, it does say unsalted butter, so that's what I've done. Now we're going to, let me bring you a little bit closer. Okay, yeah, you can see everything there. Good. Now I'm just going to cut the butter into the flour. You can use your fingers, you can use a fork, or you can use a pastry. Uh, what do you call these things? Um, there was an, I saw it on here. Cut the butter. Okay, it doesn't say it, but there's a little name for this little tool. What I'll do is I'll do it as a pop-up, so you'll see it. And all I'm doing is pressing the butter until you want little, little pebbles, look, little, little rocks of all the flour. Okay. And after a while, this gets stuck, just undo it, loosen it up, and do some more. I'm not going to have you watch me do all this. I've got other videos where I'm doing pastry and dough, like making pies and stuff. So I'm going to cut back when this is totally done, add all the ingredients, mix it up. Then we're going to roll it into a dough. Then we're going to roll it flat, and then we're going to cut it. And I'm going to be using my um, empanada mite maker. This is a big one. And I'll put my empanada link video on in the description box to that one. Okay, we'll bring you back. Okay, I got it into the ball shape, just like it said. Now I'm going to take each one, and you're going to make about 22 to 25 balls, and you're just going to roll them into a ball. I've already done a few, you see. And I went ahead and measured my empanada dumpling maker it's about 1.5 inches which is roughly about six inches and this is what I the size that I need so I can just lay it flat roll them out lay them flat so now I'm just gonna roll all these out and I'm gonna start laying rolling them out and I'm just gonna roll them and then I'm gonna put them on top of here stuff them with my chicken and vegetable I used my pressure can chicken pot pie filling and I, I used a jar of raw chicken because I wanted a bunch of chicken in there because this is going to be our dinner. So we'll bring it when we get back to that phase. Okay, we are back. I've already done a batch. One batch is already in and out of the oven. Put four on a cookie sheet. Again, it depends. Whoops, I'm sorry, I just moved. It depends on the size of cookie sheet. Also the size, whichever one you're going to be making. And... These little extra pieces is once you close it out, you squeeze it. If you have any extra dough, just pull that off of there. And then reuse the dough into your next bat, next item. What do you call these? Um, empanada, into your next empanada. And to get a nice little round circle, start off with two or three turns to the rolling pin. Not a total 360, just like a quarter turn. And continue to roll. In the exact same spot, just roll, don't forget to flip it. And I am by no means a perf perfect perfectionist when it comes to making round tortillas <laughs> or round dough, pastry, whatever it is that you're making. And thank goodness I have the little cheat sheet here on my uh, pastry sheet to help me, but... So you want to just barely turn it, and I'm still only rolling in the center part. See how it's long? It's more longer now. 
So now I'm going to flip it over. And then again, I'm still only rolling on the center. And with this, with this recipe, you don't need the extra flour. I have a little pile of flour right here, but you don't need it because it doesn't ask for it. It didn't ask for it, but I brought it just in case. In case the dough stuck to my rolling pin, but I think think because of all that butter, it's why it's not sticking. Now I'm pretty much to the end. I don't want these overly thin because I don't want them to bust. So, just to FYI you, hubby wanted some hoisin sauce. So he put his in a hoisin sauce. And here it is. This is the chicken. A whole a one quart size jar of raw chicken that was pressure canned. It was the thighs, the uh, legs, and yeah, it was just two thighs and two legs. And then I had my chicken pot pie filling, which has the chicken, chicken breast, uh, celery, and carrots, and it's all just done in water. No other seasonings or nothing. The flavor from the chicken is enough, and you see what you what all you get. So. Here's my empanada maker, dumpling maker, all kinds of names. What is that? I got a piece of something. I don't know what that is. Okay. And if you do good, when it falls in the middle, it should overlap to cover this whole thing. Now you can see I have a gap here, I have a gap here, and I have a gap here, but that's okay. I'm good to go with that. So now... I'm going to add my filling only to one half. You could make them full, but then they may not close and they may open up on you if you overfill them. So don't overfill them because you're uh, during the baking process because it takes 25 to 27, 27 minutes to bake. It may, oops, you can't see my face. You can't, um, it'll open up. And it's going to ooze anyway from the natural juices of whatever's in the filling. Now you see how when you squeeze you have that excess amount? But here there is none, but there is over here. All you do is while it's still closed, take off this excess and just pinch it off. Put it on your pastry sheet, pastry mat. Okay. Because you want to make a nice, pretty, pretty one. And then slowly pick it up, and it'll release. You see how it's releasing? Ta-da! Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> and just carefully take it out, and see how it's all shaped up. And see how it's all... Flatten together because this little little doodaddy thing squeezes it all together. Now, if you ever had a little piece that didn't get done, and I was lucky this one was actually this is a really pretty good one. But I don't want to waste my dough. Oh, that was a piece of chicken. Let me get my, I have a little paper towel here. And I'm just gonna flatten up my little dough. And I'm just going to bake it. And it'll just be a little piece of dough. Because there's no sense. I mean, I could throw it away. Yeah. But what the point? It's one little bite-sized piece. No big deal. Okay, so let me bring you back over here now. Here is... Let me get you in frame. Yeah, you're in frame. Here's where I have some more. And we're going to get egg, egg wash, which is uh, one raw egg and a little bit of water. Get a little brush, and it gives it a golden color when it's baking. Just slather it all over the place. If you mess up, that's why it's good to put either parchment paper or this. I'm using a silicone mat here, and that way you don't have hardly any cleanup mess. Other than you might have some oozing, but that's just part of what these things, dumplings and panadas are. So if you do, like this one's going to ooze because I could see that right there. That did not seal. Let me just get my little fork and squeeze it down. Yeah, I just lost the shape of the 
empanada maker, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. I'm good to go. I'm okay with that part. And then you just make sure you put it all over everything, any of the pastry that you see standing up. Not standing up, face up, excuse me, face up is the correct terminology. Whatever's faced up. Now this one and this one, I put two, two little markings on it with poke it with my fork. Those are uh, my pressure canned peaches with some sugar. So that's going to be a little dessert. We're going to get two of those. Okay, and you don't have to poke this like you do a pie. We'll pop them in the oven at 375 for about 25 to 27 minutes. And then we'll bring you, actually I'm going to show you in just, I can show you right now. This is my first batch. But I forgot to do the wash, the egg wash. So you can see that. Oh, they're still kind of hot. I'm not going to pick it up. Let me get my spatula. See how they blew up a little bit? That's just what they do. These did not blow up at all. And this was kind of full, pretty full. It was filled pretty full. So, and see how the back of it got all nice and toasty? It doesn't have the egg wash, that's all. The egg wash just makes it look a little bit prettier. But it's cooked and it's done. That one made a little bit of a mess, but we're good. That's okay. So let me get those other ones in the oven and we're going to do a little taste test because I am done with this batch. Well, when I get this in the oven, we'll have time to do, ooh, that oven heat got to me, woo, that's hot. Okay, let me get a plate. And let's do the taste test. I don't know which one of these will have the hoisin in it and which is just its plain chicken. But let me bring you close so you can see what's going on. There it is. And let's do a take a bite. And you can, of course, once it's cooled off, you can eat it like with the hand or use your fork, however you want to do it. Oh, yeah. A little warm. See that chicken filling in there? You can see the steam coming out. So let's do a little taste test. Okay, yeah, you can see me. Let's see what the dough tastes like. I know the chicken filling tastes good because I've had it many, many times. Mmm, 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 mmm. It tastes just like dough, like a biscuit. Well, not a biscuit, not really so much like a biscuit. But it tastes like an empanada bowl. Emp empanada dough. Mm. I'll put in the description the full, and I'm sorry for talking with a full mouth. I'll put in the description box a full recipe, which is very short. Now for the sweet ones, what I'm going to do next time, and I'm going to add this note in there. If I'm making a pastry empanada with fruit, I will add some sugar. I would say like a, I would say like a fourth cup, because it calls for four cups of flour. I would say for like one fourth to one half cup of sugar in the dough when I'm mixing it with the flour when I'm when I'm cutting the butter into the flour you cut the butter into the flour once it's all cut and you've got little pebbles all over with all the butter and the flour mixed together then you add the salt when I add the salt I would add my sugar at that time so that way the outside pastry is a little bit on the sweeter side so when I when I do that the next one I'll do an add-on lib quick little short on that where you've got sweet dough for the sweet filling inside 
But I did add sugar to my peaches that are in the in the oven cooking right now, so they're gonna be plenty sweet enough. Mmm. I call this a two thumbs up. No. Oh, let me show you my hubby. Hubby made one in the good food food ninja foodie. How long did you cook it for, Poppy? So he did it at 350 degrees for how long? Uh, a little, 10 minutes and check it. About 10 minutes and he checked it. So here's his that was done in the Ninja Foodie. And here he has his hoisin sauce in his and it was really, really good. And here's mine. And again, I forgot to do the egg wash on his also. So I'll put a qu quick little pop-up photo on toward the end of this last batch to have the egg wash so you can see the difference between the ones with egg wash and ones without. It won't make the taste any different. It's just going to make it look prettier and shinier. That's all it does, the egg wash. So anyway, this is my take of chicken pie, chicken pot dumpling, not chicken pot pie. This is one with, uh, what's that sauce again? Horse what? Hoisin. Hoisin sauce. I gotta pronounce that. I gotta figure out how to spell that. It's the bottle's in the fridge, and this is just a plain one. And we're gonna go eat dinner. We thank you so much for watching, and I want to say thank you to all my current subscribers and any new people. If you haven't already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and place a comment. I love to know what you all you what all do you put in when you make your dumplings or empanadas? What kind of feelings do you use, and what all do you make in them? And because these are a little they're a little hard. they're not hard, but they're a little st stiff. These would be great for lunches for the next day. Pop them in the microwave, heat them up, or if you have a toaster oven, put them in a toaster oven. You've got a meal instantly. Now you can freeze the dough. I think it's set up to three months. I'll double check the research and I'll put a little pop up on it. And you can put cook these, leave them in the fridge already cooked for up to three days. They'll be good. So if you're not gonna if you're gonna eat them in three days, stick them in the fridge, wrap up, put them in an uh, airtight container. Uh, I would put a little paper towel on the bottom of it because the moisture from the fridge is gonna make it moist and it's gonna make the bottom a little bit on the soggy side. And you don't want to pick it up and have a soggy dough. So I would do that and layer it or layer it in between wax paper if you're gonna do two or three. But this is a great pick, great lunch. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you the next time. Bye bye.